Thank you, Larry. <clears throat> well, I'm excited to be here this afternoon. Uh, it's just a short walk. Uh, Kaiser Permanente's uh, national headquarters is in Oakland. I work at 18th and uh, Harrison. So that's pretty local. So I'm excited about being able to share with you some of the um, local initiatives that are in place as we speak that are um, reducing greenhouse gases. So up here we have a real person. I'm not showing a polar bear because although we agree in biodivers uh, that biodiversity is important, there are human health benefits to reducing greenhouse gases that you are all abundantly um, aware of. So this afternoon what I want to discuss briefly is a little bit about Kaiser Permanente and why we care. Some of the infrastructure and tools that a large company like Kaiser has to reduce greenhouse gases and save energy. Um, what that energy strategy is uh, for last year and that we're um, even improving uh, as we speak this year. And finally, the local projects that were, are uh, uh, in progress and um, actually implemented. So uh, Kaiser Permanente is a large organization. We're in eight regions across the country. We're in Hawaii and California, the Northwest, Colorado, Georgia, Ohio, and the Mid-Atlantic. That should add up to eight. And uh, this national energy policy that I'm going to be talking about shortly, the points, uh, applies nationally. Now, we all know that it takes, uh, there, there is some organizational inertia about that, but we're making progress. And the evidence of that um, I'll be going into shortly. So we've got 8.7 million members. Um, uh, uh, probably a number of those are out here today, um, as some of you. There's 15,000 docs and 165,000 employees uh, as part of the enterprise. We have 36 hospitals that we own and uh, operate and additional hospitals that we contract with. And we have about 450 medical office buildings across the enterprise. So why are we doing this? Well, since, 19, since 2005, we've been, uh, we were members, we've been members of the former uh, California Climate Action Registry, and now the Climate Registry. And we've been reporting our greenhouse gas inventory, uh, and it's on our website since, since that time, since 2005. But you can see that the largest piece of the inventory, 90%, is our electricity and gas, uh, stationary uh, sources as well as purchased electricity. So that's, that's my piece of the puzzle. My colleague, Joe Bialowicz, um, he, um, manages the balance of the, of the sustainability program. Uh, my focus is on reducing BTUs. Now, um, what we need is an infrastructure to do that, and that infrastructure um, consists of, we have a governance in infrastructure. Um, we have a, uh, we, we all know that, push the button, push the button. <laughs> um, we all know that um, you, can't, uh, you can't manage what you don't measure. So a critical key piece was to put in place a, a nationwide uh, national billing system and uh, that national billing system is online for us, and at any time of the day or night, we can see copies of our bills for any of the, um, for any of the uh, accounts, uh, like I said, nationwide. So we have a governance structure that consists of representatives of each of the eight regions, utility billing system. Um, because, of the, because we have, uh, we measure our BTUs, we can um, also measure the, um, uh, the greenhouse gas contributions of those utilities. And we have a national energy strategy that I'll um, um, mention those six points um, shortly. We know that energy, the energy pie, if you will, can be divided in ba into basically two parts. There's a supply side and a demand side. And I agree with uh, what Mark Tony said earlier this morning, which is you have to reduce demand. What did he say? He said um, you've got to reduce your use. That's the cheapest energy saved. So we have a robust program to do energy audits and retro commissioning and, some, and uh, identify capital projects. And on the supply side, um, to reduce costs, we uh, do physical hedging. What I want to mention to you specifically today is what we're doing uh, in terms of um, 
our solar, and we also have some fuel cell developments. But that is the power purchase agreement approach. Now, how many of you are familiar with power purchase agreements? Okay. For those who aren't, power purchase agreement is where third party owns, operates, maintains, designs, constructs, gets permits, et cetera, for energy, let's say, and uh, bears all that risk. We cede to them basic co property control through a license or a lease. And the um, consideration is that we, we agree to contract for a period of time, 10 years, 20 years, whatever, so they can take that contract instrument to the bank and finance the infrastructure that, well, that we will, in essence, um, pay off on through a utility bill with that contractor for the contract period. So we don't pay a dime. We pay, um, we just pay our utility bill to the extent that we're paying a PPA supplier our local utility bill to our friendly power company, PG&E or LADWP or SMUD or whoever, that bill goes down, right? So it's, it's, it's even. There's no energy saved there whatsoever, right? No, no, no kilowatt hours saved. Ideally, before that, we've re already reduced demand. So that's quite a feature. And for not-for-profits, we can't, we can't make the investment ourselves. In other words, were we to spend the capital to build a solar plant, um, we can't take, because we don't pay those kind of taxes, we can't take a, a tax credit. But by, by going the PPA route, we can't, a third party can take advantage of it. Uh, when I first uh, learned about this, I attended a class, and it was um, power purchase agreements um, and renewable energy. And in that class was a whole bunch of developers. And what I learned at that time was that it's not about our development. It's not about green power. It's not about reducing the carbon footprint. It was about those investors getting a tax write-off. And, you know, I sort of felt that, that we were sort of, you know, vehicles in their game. But it, it is what it is. And if that's how we get it, I guess that's okay. So, next slide. So, um, in terms of our uh, strategy, strategy has six points. Um, measure it, number one establish long-term targets, and what we have is a 20% uh, reduction target by the year 2020. Um, and the short term is 2% annually. Um, uh, number four is uh, to expand our use of uh, renewable resources, and so our goal by, um, is a 20%, 27% reduction. Uh, half on-site, half off-site. We have an internal discussion as to whether the off-site uh, reduction, whether we can achieve that through, um, through the PUC's RPSs, but I'll just set that aside. Um, but on-site, the reduction is 13.5%, and that's what these power purchase agreements are intended to do. Um, we want a supporting infrastructure down to the regional level, and, um, and the sixth goal is rather important, which is to... Uh, reduce organizational inertia, and that's a big one, but we're working through that. Next, please. So I want to show you, this is, this is, this is where it's at. Um, we have um, solar, um, we've initiated solar power projects at uh, three of our Northern California facilities. For those of you, uh, it's at Livermore. We have a, um, a record center at Livermore. We have a megawatt of solar on the roof there, and the feature of the, um, of our solar, all of our developments, is that we're paying for our electricity at or below what we would expect, what we're paying now to PG&E, um, or, uh, and what we would expect to pay for the, pay to the power company over the uh, contract term. It's very, very beneficial. So at no additional cost to us, we've got solar on, a uh, megawatt of solar on the roof of our facility at, um, at Livermore, which is this, this is a, a picture of that array on the bottom here. And we have about 900, uh, uh, 900 kilowatts on top of the two parking, uh, on top of the parking structure at Santa Clara, uh, at our Santa Clara hospital. So if anybody has been to the Santa Clara Medical Center and pa parks at the top deck of the parking structure, that's uh, our elevated solar there. Third location is Vallejo and that, um, ground, uh, that um, rooftop uh, a set of arrays, as well as um, uh, the elevated solar over the parking area uh, should be uh, operational in the next month or so. 
So that's, that's where the rubber hits the road. Um, uh, so we're excited about that. Do I have another slide? Oh, these are the, the, some of the challenges uh, of, um, uh, that we ran into. Level of oversight, um, that they're, they're operational. We blow through the challenges. We've got them on site. Um, and I think power purchase agreements are a neat thing. Thank you.